welcome again to Llandaf Cathedral. Today is the beginning of Christian Aid Week. And so our service this morning reflects the themes of Christian Aid and uses some of the resources produced by Christian Aid for services today. Like many church activities at the moment, Christian Aid Week is being done very differently and is being done digitally. During this time together, we will have space to read and listen, to sing and pray, to remember and acknowledge that we are part of a global community. We are neighbours near and far who are going through this coronavirus pandemic together. May our shared experience unite us in praise and prayer as one human family, separate but together, in the home that is God's world. Gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all the earth, be present with us now, in each of our homes, as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer and Healer. and absolution, mindful of the ritual significance of hand-washing in the Bible. In Scripture, hand-washing is closely associated with innocence and cleansing from sin. There are passages about hand-washing in the book of Exodus, in the Psalms, in the book of Job, the Gospel of St. Matthew, and in the letter to St. James. I wish to use 
bowl of water or stand near the sink while thinking of this part of the service. As we turn on the tap, we turn our hearts towards you, O oh God. As we wet our hands, renew our thoughts so we might be transformed. As we gather soap between fingers and all over our hands, purge us from all that brings us harm and might harm others. Remove the invisible guilt and shame that so often keeps us from you. As we rinse our hands, we trust in your overflowing grace, making all things new. Song pointed for this, this morning for today is Psalm 31. The words of the psalmist express many of the emotions that we might be experiencing during this difficult time. There may be phrases that jump out at you from this passage. You can reflect upon them. Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our Gospel reading today is from St John's Gospel. An extract from the long farewell that Jesus gave over the Last Supper. It was shortly after he washed the feet of his disciples with his own hands. Even though we're now in the fifth Sunday of Easter, these words have a poignancy and power for us to absorb and to process this Christian Aid Week Sunday. Let's listen to the Word of God. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we shall be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, 
in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. So let's look at our hands. However your hands look to you. They are almost certainly clean in these days of regular hand washing to prevent the spreading of the coronavirus. Our hands really are the most remarkable and useful tools involved in so much of what we do and how we do things. In the, even in these days of social distancing, the psalmist writes of committing his spirit into God's hands and at times of being in God's hands. He also describes his desire to be delivered from the hands of his oppressors and from a hidden invisible net that threatens to entangle him. Our hands are becoming even more significant in these days of physical distance. We might long to hold the hand of a person we can no longer touch. We pray for the hands of medics to bring healing and comfort. We are grateful for our hands, for the hands that stack shelves and deliver groceries and post. We are extra wary of everything our hands touch that come from outside our own home. This Christian Aid Week, we also think of how our hands can be far from idle. Though not handing out envelopes or hosting big breakfasts, coffee mornings, or the many things we usually busy ourselves with in Christian Aid Week, our hands can still reach out virtually to our neighbours around the world. Neighbours in refugee camps and cramped living conditions. Neighbours without adequate hand-washing facilities. Neighbours who face the devastating impact of coronavirus, with even less of the medical resources we have struggled to access here. We reach out by clasping our hands together in prayer for our neighbours and holding our hands before God as we declare our needs and our concerns for their well-being. For our own. We clap our hands for carers and we reach out by participating in this Digital Christian Aid Week through making our online donations and sharing the stories from Christian Aid partners working on the ground to be the hands and feet of love in action. Even now you can Make a donation online to help vulnerable communities on the Christian Aid website. As we wash our hands more carefully and more often, we can pray to God to hold in his care all those we have held hands with, carry and hug. We can pray for those we have never had the opportunity to physically embrace but whom we have reached out to with generous hands, giving what we can during many previous aid, Christian aid weeks. The promises in our gospel reading are often offered as hope and reassurance at times of bereavement. And they'll have a resonance for those who have lost loved ones in recent weeks and months whether or not as a direct consequence of coronavirus. Christian Aid's slogan has long been life before death. And we find in these words of Jesus challenge and inspiration for this exceptional Christian Aid week. The comforting words of Jesus, do not let your hearts be troubled, are spoken to the disciples who have good reason to have troubled hearts. Jesus says these words at the Last Supper, just after he has washed their feet with his own hands, talked of his betrayal, of Peter's denial, and his imminent departure. These are words of comfort offered for unsettling times, and are worth meditating on in these challenging times today. With coronavirus resulting in many of us spending much more time in our houses, 
The spaciousness of the Father's house with many dwelling places may sound very appealing, particularly to those struggling to find their own space. Dwelling place isn't a term that we often use these days to describe the place where we live. But in this time of forced isolation, our homes have become places to dwell more than we have ever known before. Jesus uses the word dwell again when he talks of the Father who dwells in me. And in these days when our church buildings have had to remain largely empty and closed for Sunday worship, we are presented with the possibility of gaining a deeper understanding of what it is to dwell in the Father's presence and to know what it is to have God's Spirit dwell with us. Coronavirus has disrupted all routine and has many of us saying we don't know the way, along with St Thomas and St Philip. Thomas's confusion invites us all to be honest in our prayers, to be honest with each other, as we seek to follow Jesus in these exceptional times. Our Gospel passage concludes with a call to action, a call to prayer. In the middle of the Last Supper, Jesus encourages the disciples to ask him for anything and he will do it. He repeats his offer, that he will do whatever he wants, in his name. These are hard words to reconcile with the prayers that have seemingly gone unanswered in these difficult days. And they may have been difficult for the disciples to accept in the events that were to follow in the days to come. But these are words that Jesus wants his disciples to remember when he's no longer with them. Come to him as he does, as he goes to the Father, with every cause, concern, and request. Even if he cannot be seen or is not with them in person. These are words of hope and promise, of connection for us, now and always. We may be separate, but we are not alone. Physical absence and separation do not mean abandonment. By entering into the dwelling place of God in prayer, he brings us back to the way, the truth and the life, again and again. So we pray. God, our refuge, we come to you with open hands, some of us with hearts full of questions, some of us bruised by bereavement, some of us fearful of what the future holds, all of us stunned by the events of this year. Draw close to us now in each of our homes as we place our honest questions and hopes into your open, resurrected, nail-pierced hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With the honesty of the psalmist, the wrestling questions of Job and the lament of the prophets, we bring to you our questions or our signs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the cry of our hearts, Lord, for bereaved neighbours near and far. Comfort those pained by being absent and hold close those who are hurting alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Easter, renew us with resurrection hope. That while weeping lingers in this night, joy will come with the morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
On this Christian Aid Week Sunday, we pray for and with communities across the world who are most vulnerable to coronavirus. We pray for people living in refugee camps and city slums, with limited sanitation facilities, who are unable to wash their hands regularly and have little opportunity to isolate from others. We pray for Christian Aid partners working to provide soap and buckets, communicating clear, accurate information, raising the voices of the most vulnerable and ensuring they are kept as safe as possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are self-isolating, which can sometimes feel like doing nothing. Remind us that we are all doing our part, saving lives by staying at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for much wisdom and resources for those in local and national authority, for all frontline and key workers here in Britain, Ireland, and across the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we have clapped to honour them, we clap our hands now in praise of your glorious creation and with the hope that the first shoots of another possible world are coming into being. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever.
presence of the Creator refresh you. May the comfort of the Son renew you. May the inspiration of the Spirit restore you to be love in action, even from a distance, in our neighbourhoods near and far, this day and forevermore. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and forever.